So today I just thought we'd take some time and look at this Dyson hair dryer. I got this hair dryer non-working and I have other purposes for it. But one thing I get asked about a lot is what's in this mystery box for Dyson. So I've mentioned before I thought it was some type of EMI filter, but I really don't know what's in it. And I've only had a couple of these and I've never really had a reason to take one apart. But since I do have my hands on this one and one more, I thought I would at least take one of the two apart. This one still had the cellophane protector over the little end where the data is. Looks like Leone. This one also has the ground fault plugs. Uh, some of the older ones don't. So I may look at this hairdryer in a separate video, but I just thought today we'd take a look at this mystery box. And hey, what's inside? Go ahead and comment below now if you would like to guess what's inside before the end of the video. Instead of putting this in like a milling machine, I'm just going to secure it here and just take about one millimeter off of the housing. Because looking at it from the side, it's about one and a half millimeter. So hopefully that penetrated it pretty good. We can just score it with a knife and finish taking it apart. I don't want to go too deep. It's just a quick and easy setup here of something I had sitting around. So just thought I'd run it across there and let's see how easy it is to get into. Back now with my Ulfa knife that I can set the depth on and lock the blade down on. It'll help us not go too deep here because hopefully we're almost through. But I can tell you I'm going to speed through a lot of this video because it is feeling extremely hard. And it's feeling much thicker than the outside shell looks looking from the side profile. And once I get into this I'll show you what I'm talking about. But I'm just going to take some time here with the knife and different size screwdrivers and maybe some pliers and just work at it yes this is definitely much thicker than one millimeter maybe several millimeters thick and it don't feel like a pliable plastic it feels pretty hard more like nylon it looks like a PE though Yeah, as we can see here, yeah, it's a lot thicker. I'm going to go ahead and take these screws out. I guess it holds some kind of strain relief in place. Or maybe that's some type of carrier for the electronics board inside. It looks like plastic. We hope that's not a potty material. That would be disappointing if we couldn't see what's on the board. It feels so hard that it might be brittle. Oh, yep. It's yep, brittle, all right. Piece flew over there. So by loosening this up, it might slide out now. Once the screws have been removed from the carrier. I'm going to take a larger screwdriver and just work it around here and see if it'll loosen up. Yep, I don't see why that don't slide there. Yep, there we go. Well, let's hope the other side looks different. Oh yeah, okay. So here we go. This is what people have been asking to see or asking what it is. And I mentioned many, many times that I could run the Dyson with just the um, 120 volt straight on it testing. So I knew it was probably some type of filter. Didn't know it was just caps. But if you look here... Just how thick this housing is. It was very surprising. The little lip that looks like a little over one millimeter. As I'll show here with these little cheap calipers. But if we go on inside we see that it's closer to three. A little over three millimeter. 
Yeah, it looks like a little over three millimeters. So yeah, if you ever have to take one apart, keep that in mind. It's a lot thicker than it looks like on the edge. I could have set my depth on my blade about three millimeter and uh, made this a lot easier and a lot quicker video. So yeah, I'll probably fast forward through a lot of that. It probably took me about 10 minutes to get into it. I'm going to remove these four torque screws it's on the strain release. Definitely has some silicone sealant holding them in place on the black carrier. And we have two X2 capacitors. I'll see if we can get a better shot of these here so you can see it. But yep, we have mains rated X2 capacitors. We have two of them. They're calling this the inline block. And we have some resistors. Two sets of series in parallel. And of course we have our capacitors in parallel as well for suppression. So we know the Dyson is high frequency, so it's probably pretty noisy. It's why they put these caps on here, I would think. So we have time in this video. If you want to, we'll look at the GFCI as well, if you're interested in that. But before we do that, let's do an up close here of the caps in case you want to see a better detail of these. And maybe you can see that picture there better. X2 275 volts AC and we have our 845 and 2 or 845 and 2 zeros so that should be 84,500 so two of those in series with parallel with another two in series so should be four times the wattage to bleed the caps off so if you unplug it that 120 to 240 volts depending on uh, what model you have right um won't be across the prongs, especially the straight plug-in type. Now let's go ahead and take the T8 screws out here. And let's get a look inside. It's probably going to be just a typical GFCI, but we'll see how Dyson does it. And we do see our contact points here for our tests. We'll look at that closer in just a minute. There's our reset button that pushes our contacts. As you can see there. So it looks like I'm going to have to get destructive to get a better look at this, really. It doesn't come apart easy. We will go ahead and remove the torques on this strain relief as well. Also a T8. Yes, I'm definitely going to have to take some snips, some diagonal cutters and cut into this to remove the board. So let's look real quick here. Remove this reset button so you can see the board a little clearer a lot of people think you've got to have the ground wire for GFCIs and you actually don't it's it's monitoring between the hot and the neutral and any discrepancy between the two with current flow it assumes a ground fault and just activates and trips if it picks up six milliamps differential between the two definitely assuming that that someone else could be grounding out the circuit if it's not picking up the same current as it's canceling through the current transformer here with the red and the blue wire, then it will trip. You can see our current transformer in here, especially from the side here. We got some MOVs here, metal oxide varistors for suppression. I can't find any information on this chip. Looks like where our test button goes across, maybe puts these resistors in the circuit to pick up the, um, the fault milliamp signal to, to open up the contacts when you test it we'll go ahead and nip this plastic around the plug connectors the blades there we go we should be able to lift this off now and take a closer look We'll see our contacts raising up. We see the little coil that helps latch the contacts in place when it is reset. Different view here of the, the contact points, which are very heavy duty. <laughs> Coming off your blades here of your plug. Pretty neat how they got this in such a small package, really. Go ahead and cut these wires off and... I'll better give you some photos of the board as well. So 
So there's a look at our toroid for our current sensing. A little bit better look at the coil and the contacts. And it looks like it works very similar to most GFCIs. Just is in a pretty small package. So here's a close up of the board if you're interested. And I hope you enjoyed this video looking inside of the mystery box and the GFCI for this Dyson hairdryer. If you did find the video interesting, please like, share, and subscribe. I'll have some links down in the video description of some tools and interesting items that I find helpful on my workbench. Any of those links you click on are affiliate links and they help support the channel and I greatly appreciate it. So thanks so much for watching and God bless.